In this video, I will demonstrate how to interpret graphs produced to determine if there are interactions present in a factorial ANOVA analysis. Now, when we produce a factorial ANOVA, one of the things we can ask for uh, as part of the analysis is a plot, profile plot. And this will give us an idea of how the two independent variables, the two factors, may be influencing the outcome uh, and how these two factors might be interacting with each other to produce a unique response on the dependent variable depending on one level of one factor and another level of another factor. So one of the tricks is being able to interpret these graphs to get an idea of, of whether or not an interaction is potentially present. So the example I'm going to use here is we've, uh, we've uh, taken students taking a statistics course and we've measured their uh, comfortable comfort with statistics using the fear of statistics uh, scale. And so that's our dependent variable, and that's exhibited here on the y-axis. So the, the higher the score, the uh, more they fear statistics, or the less comfortable they are with statistics. And we've used two independent variables, or two factors, to try and understand how they would affect someone's uh, confidence with statistics. We've used gender, which is shown here on the uh, x-axis here. Uh, and then the lines represent two different teaching techniques or two different classes that we subjected the students to before they took this statistics, uh, fear of statistics test. So they either went through a math skills class or they went through a confidence building class in order to see how that would affect their fear of statistics. And so, as you can see here, the green line representing the confidence building uh, class is separated from the line representing the math skills class. So that indicates that the effect, the main effect of the type of class appears to have an effect uh, because the lines are separated from one another by a, by a certain degree. Whether that's statistically significant or not, we would have to look at the p-values to determine that, but we can see there's a separation there. The other thing we can look at are the dots associated with the two uh, sexes, male and female. And what we can see here is that uh, the male mean for male in the math skills class is much higher than the mean for females in the math skills class. And we can also see this in the confidence building. So we can see here that gender or sex does have an effect on their fear of statistics uh, score because you can see the male mean is much higher than the female mean on uh, the math skills and the same thing we can see here with the confidence building. So we can see we probably have two main effects here for the type of class and for sex. But what we want to look for is an interaction here. And so essentially we will interpret an interaction as being when these two lines cross one another. They're no longer parallel. As you can see right here, they're roughly parallel to one another. So we would probably interpret that as no interaction. If they were non-parallel, in other words, if they crossed one another, we would interpret that as being a potential interaction. Now, the degree to which they cross one another is going to really have an impact on the statistical significance of the possible interaction. So they might cross each other slightly, uh, and there might be an interaction there, but it might, might not be statistically significant. So we can see here, we can interpret this graph here that we're seeing then, is that we probably have main effects for type of class as well as for sex, but there probably is not a significant interaction. Now if we look at another graph that's again using the same data, uh, but a different fear of statistics outcome, maybe we've measured this uh, after some time has passed, and what we see here now, again, we've got our two lines representing our two different classes. And then we've got male and female here on the x-axis. Now we see these two lines intersect. They're no longer parallel. They cross one another. And so we typically would, and this, this is fairly obvious that they cross one another, and we would interpret this as there is a strong potential for an interaction here. And so how we would look at this then is we can see when we look at the confidence building class, the green line, we can see that males have a much higher mean than females do on that 
you know, after taking that particular class on their fear of statistics. But if we look at the math skills class, we see this is kind of inverted. The females now have a higher fear of statistics score than the males do. So we would interpret this as there being kind of a unique interaction of the effect of the type of class depending on the gender that that individual might be. So we can see that taking the confidence building class significantly helps the female group. In other words, they have a lower fear of statistics, but the math skills groups of females, the opposite is occurring. There's a large increase in their fear of statistics. So we would interpret then this then is that female gender has a unique interaction with the type of class and then that has an effect on the mean score, in this case fear of statistics. So that would be how we could interpret these interaction plots. So two take home messages here as we interpret this and, and two messages you can use as you move on to interpret these uh, in other analyses is if the lines are parallel, in other words they do not touch one another, there probably is not a significant interaction. If they touch each other slightly or cross each other slightly, then there is an interaction but it may or may not be statistically significant. The other take home point is that when these two lines are not parallel, in other words they cross each other obviously like we see in this example, then there probably is an interaction. Now the degree to which they cross one another will have an impact on whether or not there's statistical significance. Now this again may or may not be statistically significant depending on your data, but when they cross each other like this then they most likely, uh, there's a strong possibility that there will be a, a significant interaction. So to summarize, we talked about what an interaction plot is and how it can give us some information about a factorial ANOVA. We talked about two of the, of the most common ways we can interpret uh, these interactions relative to the lines as far as being parallel or non-parallel. And then we do have to always check the p-values to determine if there really is statistical significance in these interactions. So just because we see this crossing of the lines doesn't necessarily uh, imply that there is statistical significance for the interaction. So hopefully you learned something in this video and good luck using this technique in your own research.